my Mac life, I'm here uh, with none other than Chad Fincham himself. Finally tracked him down, and we were able to set up a time to where we could talk for a little bit. And you guys are in for a real treat today. Uh, this guy's raced just about anything that's got wheels on it, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, so without further ado, thank you, Chad, for being here. And uh, how you doing today? You doing all right? I, I am. I appreciate you for having me on. It, uh, you know, we're got Christmas Eve coming up tomorrow, and then Christmas yeah. following that, and so trying to get trying to get ready for Christmas. I've still got just a tiny bit of shopping left to do, but of course I'm down here in my shop tinkering on my old goat cart. I'm r- trying to run a race in January, so trying to. I've got a lot of irons in the fire, just trying to make sure they all get attended to. But no, I appreciate you having me on tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a ton for making some time for us. Um, obviously we've heard your name before. Uh, like I said, I kind of joked, you've raced about anything with wheels, uh, here most recently. I know you're with with the Xfinity, um, and the cup series. Um, so we appreciate you taking some time with us. Tell me just a little bit how you first got into racing. Uh, did you first start racing flat carts or wing carts or, or how did all that kind of just start? I started in flat carts in uh, 2001, I believe it was. Um, I was playing t-ball for elementary school, and I enjoyed it. I ran track, and uh, and I've always been a big, passionate race fan, even at a young age. Dad was a big race fan, and, uh, you know, my grandfather. And so, uh, you know, we would always uh, make sure that we would get home that, uh, you know, after church on Sunday, we'd make sure we'd rush home. Uh, maybe swing by the drive through at KFC or something, turn on a race and watch it. But uh, I grew up, I grew up in a diehard race fan family. Nobody in my family really raced other than me. Uh, and, and really how we got going was just one Sunday afternoon, man, we was sitting there getting ready to turn on the, the race. And uh, dad was reading the newspaper. There was a kid, you know, about my age or a little older, um, had a flat cart, was selling it. And um we went and looked at it. I talked him into going and looking at it. We went and looked at it, picked it up, and um, yeah, didn't tell mom. Put it in the corner of the garage, and he was trying to figure <laughs> out a strategy. He was like, "How are we going to break this to your mom?" And you know, uh, eventually we did. We bought up all the safety gear and then started at a local track here that is now closed down, but uh, Dumplin Valley Raceway uh, raced there for many, many years, and uh, just started my career, man. At first, it was just a hobby to take place of ball sports and school and uh, yeah. just something to get the family together and do on the weekends, but, you know, it really turned into a lot more than that in a short amount of time. We uh, we got on the racetrack and had results right away. I actually won my first purple plate race in Flathead, and, uh, man, it really took off. Um, we won. We started winning a bunch, and uh, as you, you know, in the racing industry, as you continue racing, you continue meeting people owners uh engine builders tire guys and then they're always saying you know hey won't you talk to this guy won't you move over here to this series or go run this racetrack and that's how it started man and and before you know it i was i was moving on up into bandolero cars and legend cars got over on asphalt and one thing just transpired to another and uh man i i landed myself uh basically in the place that i wanted to be for many years and that's uh racing in the nascar xfinity series and uh, nascar cup series yeah Wow, that's awesome, you know, and that's funny that you say that, because I feel like a lot of folks, like you just said, I mean, it's all about being at the right place at the right time, and, um, you you know, we always kind of joke about it, but the Lord works in mysterious ways, you never know, man, how life goes, and who's going to see you, and uh, who you're going to meet, and stuff like that, so um, I'll ask you something specific, I did have a couple of questions that I knew I wanted to ask you. Um, as far as it pertains to flat carts, um, is that your general, like your love, your passion, or is it just racing in general? Like, is it dirt track for you or is it just, man, whatever, I don't care. I just want to be racing. You know, I'm glad you asked that. It's, it's, a it's a balance. I'll race anything. I don't care if we're you know, going to race uh, buggies through the Walmart and who can get groceries faster. Uh, it don't, it don't matter to me. I, I enjoy racing. I enjoy competition as a whole. Um, but for me, go-kart racing, I started on flat carts. I ran buggy too. Um, actually won uh, a lot of races in buggy, but man, I, I, I started my career on dirt, go-karts, flat carts, running around the Southeast and, and local tracks here in Tennessee. And, and I'll tell you what, I made it to NASCAR and I look back at the memories that I made with my parents and, you know, they was really the first ones 
to help me through all them years really get together. And, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have not one of them trophies back there on the wall wouldn't be there. And, right. um, you know, for me, it's a, it's a passion. It's a sentimental thing along with a, uh, a love for the sport too, though. But man, it, you know, when I'm coming over here in the race shop right now, I used to have late models and everything in here. I've sold all that, but I've got a couple go karts. I come over here, I, I play around with them, tinker with them, and then we go race. And, you know, I'm, I'm still fortunate enough to have my dad and mom around and uh, healthy enough to be able to go to the racetrack with me. Uh, they, they try and come as many of the NASCAR races as they can, unfortunately, because of COVID, they couldn't get to many this year, but you know, even, even the go-kart races that I do, they still come and it's a, it, it's a family affair, man. We, we, we grab our little enclosed, uh, trailer, load the go-karts up, kerosene heater, usually cause I'm only getting able to race in the winter time. So we're, we got a kerosene heater mom will go make some, some chili and nachos or something. And me and dad will be out there washing tires cause we're, you know, freezing our hands off, but for me, it's uh, it's a love for the sport for, first and foremost. But man, I'll tell you what, the, uh, the there's a lot, there's a huge sentimental side to kart racing for me. I grew up doing it, and uh, and it brings back a lot of great memories. Yeah, that's awesome. I kind of I kind of wondered if you'd say that. You, you know, I've been able to see some of the uh, NASCAR guys out there at the racetrack with their kids, and it's just a completely different atmosphere. And you can kind of tell that they're just out there having fun, just being yes. normal, having fun, building memories, making memories with their kids. Um, but it's also freaking awesome that you race NASCAR. <laughs> That's yeah. really cool, yeah. man. And, and so, you know, racing in the Daytona 500. I mean, come on. Who, who doesn't want to do that, right? So, um, I got, so I got a question. So tell me um, one of your favorite things about – racing dirt track and flat carts and stuff and then one of your favorite things about racing with the big boys xfinity and nascar well you know growing up i always wanted to be you know once once i got involved in racing i always wanted to be a nascar driver and i always wanted to make it to the top and uh you know um you know racing up there in nascar one of my favorite uh, uh things about that is um just knowing that you're you're at the top level of motorsports um you know you're I love the short tracks, man. I grew up after I got out of carts and through my progression, racing late models and everything, man, I'm telling you what, we race all over the Southeast and short tracks and I wish NASCAR had more short tracks than they do, but they're trying to do a good job of getting Nashville back for us and stuff like that. They're converting dirt Bristol over to dirt for the first spring race next yeah. year. They're doing I a lot that. of cool. They're doing a lot of cool things that, um, you know, as I, th I feel like it's going to fit up my alley pretty well. Um, but, uh, man, I'll tell you what, just being able to go to these tracks that you watch, you know, my idols, you know, I, I sit there and watch uh, at a young age, I, you know, Dale Earnhardt Sr. I know he passed away in 2001, uh, which is this year that I started racing. But, you know, he was my my grandfather's, my father's, you know, he was that, he was their guy. And, uh, um, you know, I grew up in an Earnhardt, diehard Earnhardt family. So I watched him. And then, you know, my as I got older, uh, that passion kind of fell into Earnhardt Jr.'s you know, uh, lap and, and I pulled for Earnhardt hard, man. I have die cast, you know, pictures. My whole room to this day is full of uh, my man cave. I guess you could say is full of Earnhardt stuff, but you know, being able to show up at a racetrack and pull through the tunnel down there at Daytona in February and know that I'm getting to go buckle in a car, uh, to, to race on this racetrack that they once raced on that I watched on TV. So that's one of the coolest things about being, you know, being able to race up there and then, Man, on on the, the the flat cart stuff and racing around on dirt and stuff, man, just it's so much fun. And you, for, <laughs> you forget you forget as a uh, you know as a driver in NASCAR, you know I've always been the type to be as much hands on as I can. And before COVID, they got see when COVID hit, they got very strict with um, drivers being in the pits and stuff. You know they. They pretty much want us isolated. That way, if one of our crew members was to test positive, they wouldn't have to pull us out of the seat. So right. they're trying to keep us out of the garage and keep us isolated. But, you know, my heart belongs in the garage. I'm in the shop right now. I still need to do a few Christmas shopping items, but I'm in the garage right now playing with a go-kart, putting a new axle and bearings in. And I've always been hands-on. And, and as I have gotten up to NASCAR, you know, the shop where the cars are at in Statesville, North Carolina. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. So it's three and a half, four hours, one one direction to go over there and 
you know, it, uh, I felt like uh, a, a, a part of that has uh, drifted away from me. So when I get yeah. to go run flat carts, man, uh, one of the coolest things is just, it's, it, it's my, that's my baby from head to toe inside now. I built it. I know everything about it. Right. And when something goes wrong at the racetrack, you know, it's up to me to fix it. And, uh, I really like that man, and then just which you know this, but they're just a blast to drive. I mean, yes, no suspension, are. no suspension, you know, 10, 12, 13 horsepower, whatever the case is. And I mean, you're running, you feel like you're running 200 mile an hour on the ground <laughs> down there. And uh, you know, we probably ain't doing 60 or 70, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. You you you, you got a draft that plays into effect, and you got to be smooth, man. And uh, you can't. Uh, you got to be smooth and you can't, uh, you can't, you can't bobble. You bobble the next guy gets getting that spot. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool things about kart racing that I love and will always try and be a part of. Yeah, yeah absolutely. man. I heard you mention obviously a lot of the tracks in Tennessee racing around there. Do you, um, of course you still mess around with flat carts. Do you ever come over to North Carolina at all? Not to race usually. Um, yeah, growing up, uh, you know, we, we, we stayed, Numpum Valley, Ashway, Beach Nut, um, Carnesville, Georgia. Um, you know, I mean, we traveled around Clay City, Kentucky. We did a we did a bunch of traveling and stuff like that. Okay. And and where I don't get to race carts as much now, I pretty much stick with whatever's closest and open yeah. at my convenience. Yeah. Um, you know, Dumplin Valley, whenever they closed down, um, you know, I got I had a, I had the pleasure of meeting Rodney Byers down there, the owner at Dogwood Speedway, and I'll I'll be honest with you. That's, uh, I, I guess, you know, that's one of my, my I, I call that track, you know, outside of Ashway, that's my home track right now. And, you know, I, I love Rodney and, 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 his, and what he's got going on down there in his program. And I try and go down there and race with him as much as I can. And, uh, man, I would like to get over to North Carolina and race. Uh, uh, yeah. A lot of a lot of times we try and stay with uh, with the Burris program. That's what I grew yeah. up racing. You know, when, when I switch, when I, when we won the WKA championship in, I think it was 2004, that was on uh, Maxis tires. But uh, me and Dad, we we hate a Maxxis tire. It is nothing with the pro. It's nothing with the program. The tire quality, they are great tires. It's a good good you know, uh, good deal they got going. But we just couldn't ever figure them out the way we wanted to. And uh, we really, you know, around here, Dumplin Valley and stuff, we was always on Burris stuff. So uh, yeah. if I go over if I go over the mountain, I feel like I'm gonna have to get on a set of Maxxis, and I might I might get left in the dust. Yeah, man, we um. <laughs> It's funny, the local track I ran out this year was actually a Burris tire, no prep class. So no tire prep, no washing tires during the race and all that. So it was a, uh, of course, me being brand new into the sport, uh, it, you know, it was great for me because I was able to save a lot of money. Um, but I've been to some of the other tracks with the Maxxis tire. And, um, of course, you've got, you know, Hoosiers and all the other ones. But Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just curious. I didn't know if you ever came, like you said, came across the mountain over here and raced any. Um, we've got quite a few dirt tracks around here, man. We have a good time. I'll tell you, I would, I would really enjoy like to maybe venture over and run that D and Q series at Millbridge because it runs on yeah. Tuesday nights, I think. And yeah. see, that would fit great with my schedule uh, NASCAR racing on a weekend. So right. I would love to be able to do that. And there's a couple of my friends that race over there and, uh, and uh, obviously, I'd probably have to go go get me a couple sets of Maxis and figure out what we need to do on the prep game and inside yeah. soaking them and you know. But uh, I would like to venture over there and try that track out. Yeah, man, that's a cool little track. They have a uh, they have a kids' night on Tuesday nights and do all kinds of cool stuff out there. That D and Q series that's kind of took off out there. Uh, it's yeah. Pretty fun to watch. Um, uh, like I said, I won't keep you long, man. My last question for you was really. Just what is your advice for folks who are wanting to get into the sport? My channel this year was really me getting into the sport for the first time and just kind of doing everything, you know, as a brand new race car driver, uh, brand new, getting a car, all that stuff. So what would some of your just general advice be for somebody wanting to get into the sport for the first time? You know, it's hard to say, like, you know, this is what you need to do. And, um, People always have their own opinions. I feel like um, the biggest thing is I feel like you've got to always operate within your means because, and what I mean by that is when I was trying to make it to NASCAR, I had made it to stock car racing and I'd been running the NASCAR Wheeling Series in a late model from 2012 
we went full time in 2013 and I did that every year full time competed for championships and track points and everything from 2013 right. all the way through about 2015 I guess it was so about three years two three years and me and dad kind of had a, a crossroads because that was really to the full extent of what we could afford and, and it was tough right. for us getting sponsors we had a couple local companies that would you know bring food to us to the track or maybe buy right. us half a set of tires at, a, at for you know maybe one or two yeah. races in a season and right. i'll tell you what but but it was all coming out of our pocket pretty much and you know i was wanting to make it to the top and we were trying to form a game plan of what to do and i'll be honest with you i got you got to be able to position yourself. It, it's it's so hard, but you got to be able to try and position yourself to lie, to meet people and and never ever 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 burn a bridge. Because I ended up in 2015, Dad come to me and he said, "We're not going to be able to continue racing like this. You know, um, we're going to have to figure something out because you know this is this is just too much money." And yeah. um, I'll be honest, that was in 15, and then in 2016. I was signing autographs for Food City Family Race Night on in Bristol on State Street, and they parked us right next to Eric McClure's uh, pit when he was driving for Hefty. And I got to meet Eric and talking to him, and uh, we exchanged phone numbers. And he called me in the off season of 2015, and he said, "Man, I'm getting ready to step out and retire from it, driving in Xfinity. I'm thinking about starting my own team in K and N." you've been running the late models around the southeast and right here you're in my backyard because he lived in abington virginia and he said let's let's build us a car let's run us four or five races and see what happens and and he called me and we built us a car we went and ran bristol and our first race out together we won wow and, and that that really propelled my career because that win meeting eric knowing the contacts that he had in the sport and then first race out we went and won bristol that that really is what propelled my career into where I'm at today. Um, you know, you in today's time, you got to sell so much sponsorship because yeah. racing is so costly. And really, the biggest thing is be able to market yourself, believe in what you're selling, um, be confident, and just go out and try and execute on the track. Uh, be very presentable, dress nice, and just make sure your equipment looks as good as it can. Sometimes uh, it's easier to throw a body on and, and, a, and a decal for a number and call it a day, but if you spend just a little bit more attention to detail, I've noticed that sponsors are attracted to nice-looking things and race cars, and I've been in right. those meetings before, and you know, some people will ask, man, you're so picky on decals, and, and I always – try and decal my own cars even in xfinity man i still am a big uh uh you know hands-on guy when it comes to decal and stuff and uh, uh i just i just really like it i'm an, i'm a i'm very ocd and i like it to look good so that's just a few tips and uh you know yeah. like i say there's there's a there's there's really no right or wrong but uh i would just i would just try and you know be be uh be as good as you can and uh you know just press on awesome man good stuff that's perfect uh, like I told you, man, this is just we're just talking back and forth. And I think the folks watching will definitely be able to find value um, in this quick interview. Do you have anything else that you want to mention while I got you before we uh, finish up? I uh, mean, I can't really think of anything. We covered a lot. But uh, I mean, obviously, um, you know, without without my parents um, and, 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 and just the, the goodwill of God and everything that uh, has come together uh, throughout throughout my life. You know, my parents is you know I mentioned earlier in the video starting in yep. kart racing is by far my biggest supporters. And and I I wouldn't have not one trophy, not one race car, not you know without them. So uh, you know all my thanks goes to them and everybody else that's helped along the way. And um, you know any any young carters out there um, or or any for that fact any other type of racing if you're trying to work your way up, get into a series, you know, that, that you want to get into, you know, social media is such a big thing right now and, and everybody's yeah. on it. I try and be as active as possible. You know, when people DM me and ask me questions, it might take me a few weeks uh, to get back to them, but I always try my hardest to respond to absolutely every DM that comes through. And, uh, um, you know, I think that's, you know, a cool tool for, 
young drivers to be able to utilize because if they have questions or, I mean, you never, you never know uh, what shot you might have to take. Uh, just send a, send a driver or a team and a, a, a message through social media and that might change someone's life. You know, it's uh, yeah. just, so just, uh, just always keep that in mind. That's cool, man. Good stuff. Well, thanks again, Chad, for uh, being with us today. Uh, all you guys watching, thank you for your support. Uh, this year has been a whirlwind for everybody, uh, certainly for me and the channel. Thank you all so much for your support and all your comments and um, let me know what I'm doing right and what I might be doing wrong. I still appreciate all those comments, uh, but thanks for watching this one. Hopefully you guys were able to find value in it. I know you were and um, get on Chad's social media. He's on Instagram, always posting stuff and let's follow his career. And obviously we all hopefully turn into fans now after being able to talk with you for a little bit. But thanks for your time, man. Really appreciate it. Take I care. appreciate it. Thank you. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody.